And we're back uh, here with uh, WWE 2021 save and TW 2020. Yes, I know for our subscribers, uh, longtime watchers of this series. We took a little bit of a break uh, here over the past four weeks, and there was a reason for that. Work got a bit uh, chaotic. Uh, I think I may have mentioned it before. I do some uh, media work in wrestling, actually, and uh, things got a little bit wild. As you know, if you've been watching the world of professional wrestling over the past month or so, been a lot happening. Um, and so uh, work has been, schedule's been crazy, been a lot going on. And so I had to step away from the series for a little bit. But the good thing is we had 25 episodes built up. And I know there's a lot of people who have left comments who are still catching up on the series. So actually it was probably not the worst thing to take a little break and uh, let some people catch up here as uh, we jump into this next episode. And so now for those of you who have already caught up, I know you've been waiting a while and hopefully the SummerSlam payoff when we get there will be worth it uh, once we get to it. Uh, but for now, uh, I know, be sure, if you want to, I know a lot of you, you know, watch different series and everything, and maybe you don't remember a whole lot. Since this has been a month. I don't blame you. <laughs> There's a, a lot of stuff I had to uh, look back on and sort of resharpen with my creative plans. But um, go back and watch the most recent episodes, uh, the previous two, which would be episode 23 and 24. Check out the most recent Raw and SmackDown. That will give you uh, a little refresher on where things stand here. As we are in August, week two, 2021, the road to SummerSlam continues, and let's jump in. Pre-show, Omas is here with a win against Drew Gulak, 524. We put Omas in here, what is it? I think we put him on the last show with his actual debut on the pre-show. We give him another pre-show match. Not surprised that they don't click. Awkward bout. Just two completely different styles here. We're not concerned with that, as we talked about in the last episode. Um, we just want to get uh, Omas some work, and uh, we do that here. He gets the win over Gulak. And a little bit better of a pre-show match in this one. Angel Garza getting the victory over Mansoor, 655, wing clipper. Not going to lie to you, it's been a month since we've done this. I've probably ran this same pre-show match before. I think it's been a little while. I, I try to keep those marked down to where I, I don't do the same pre-show matches. <laughs> and I, I try not to do many rematches, period, as you as you all know, uh, but we probably ran this on the pre-show before. But nonetheless, uh, Garza, who just came off the loss in the uh, the U.S. title open challenge, he lost to Kevin Owens on last week's edition of Raw, which I guess that's last month's edition of Raw at this point. Uh, but on the previous episode of Raw, uh, Garza unsuccessful in his attempt to win the U.S. title. So uh, it is Angel Garza getting the win here on the pre-show, and we're about to start the main card with a big Big development, and uh, hopefully this has been worth the wait. I know it won't necessarily be in some sense, but we are going to at least start the comeback Raw here uh, with a, a pretty big angle. Kevin Owens, 91. Wow. We've said it, haven't we? Kevin Owens delivers all the time. Like, he has delivered in everything. I'd say he's been one of the most consistent outside of Roman Reigns and maybe Edge. I think Owens has been the most consistent person we've had in terms of delivering just solid stuff week after week after week. And that is a good thing because we are starting with a big angle and it does involve Kevin Owens. He is here. He wants his next challenger. Also, real quickly, as you can see, one of the things I, I will admit that slowed me down a little bit um, and I think made me kind of have to slow down a little while on the, the series was having to, to do the writing of the angles and everything. For those out there who, who are doing this and I, I watch plenty of series who do, like, bravo, because I don't know how you do it as much as you do. It's It's very challenging. I think to put it together with writing the own angles. I did that for a while, as you guys saw on the previous videos uh, here recently. But I think to be able to push through this and to, <laughs> given my 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 work and stuff, I think I'm going to have to just use the regular angles and not be able to write some of the angles word for word. I am still going to do that on some of these, and it's going to be um, it's going to be sort of a pick and choose scenario. If there's some that I feel like I need to sort of uh, in more detail really dive into. I will do that on some of them, but I'm going to probably just use the regular angles and, and you know, do what I had been doing before um, to be able to, just to not get necessarily bogged down from a time standpoint. Because uh, as you know, and, and people who do this, again, I say bravo to them because it's uh, it's pretty awesome to see people who actually can do that on a regular basis, you know, day to day, week to week. Uh, but uh, I just think for me, I'm going to have to just use the regular ones for the most part now. 
and that was that was one of the challenges I think of having to to sort of slow down a bit on the series. But uh, we will go with that. And Kevin Owens here, ready. His next challenger. Who's it going to be for the U.S. title open challenge? <laughs> Goldberg is back. I know. If we would have did this actually, you know, around the time that we were going to before, I think it was right when Goldberg was coming back. Now, I will say, though, this was already in my original plans, and I'm going to be saying that a lot because there are some things that we're going to be getting into that may feel similar to what the WWE did uh, in this kind of time frame we're in right now. But Goldberg is back, and I know it says backstage. Again, ignore that. Um, Kevin Owens in the ring. Goldberg. I think I may have just picked the wrong segment. Goldberg is here to answer the U.S. title open challenge. So they go face-to-face. They start brawling. We have everyone coming out for a pull-apart. So we're not going to get the match tonight, uh, even though it is the U.S. title open challenge. It gets a 73, which it's fine. It is what it is. The Jimmy Smith thing, I know a lot of people have talked about that in the comments. We're going to address the Jimmy Smith thing. I think I may have said that on one of the previous videos. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I did. We've already got something in the works here on the commentary stuff. But we're going to have to let it play out until we get to that point. But Goldberg is back. He has essentially answered the open challenge from Kevin Owens. But we're not getting a match here because all of a sudden we've got an argument. The brawl breaks out. And, again, you can probably know where this is headed um, as we make the road to SummerSlam here. Continue to move right along. Um, You can probably have a pretty good guess of where we're going to get to. But um, it is a pretty interesting story. We'll get into it with the segments coming up. But... Um, as we progress over the next couple of weeks. But I wanted to bring Goldberg back here, and I know what a lot of people are thinking. Why would you do that? Um, it will all make sense eventually. I keep I say that all the time, but I promise. We're not just bringing Goldberg back to bring him back. A lot of things will make sense, and uh, we will get to that. But it is Goldberg returning to really up the ante here when it comes to Kevin Owens and his U.S. title. And then we get uh, a Money in the Bank qualifier here. It was announced on last week's episode of Raw. Stone Cold Steve Austin announced it would be Cesaro and John Morrison qualifying for the Raw Money in the Bank match, which we're going to have at SummerSlam. Cesaro advances, and he is in the ladder match uh, at SummerSlam. Gets the win over John Morrison with the sharpshooter. Uh, Match gets the crowd buzzing. That's what we always like to see. Two guys here that, uh, again, have been pretty solid in everything we've done with them. We've had a pretty clear direction of where we're headed with Cesaro. Morrison's kind of been a little more up and down, but we know what we want to do with Cesaro, and uh, this is just another kind of plot point to get there. So it's Cesaro added to the match, and uh, he joins Edge, Sheamus, Ricochet, and uh, there's probably someone else I'm forgetting at this point, but we will, we will, we will circle back around on that. Actually, we've got another, got another one coming up here in a bit, so we'll have someone else qualify as well. Rey Mysterio uh, also in the mix. He's also qualified. So we're really starting to put together a pretty good group here uh, when it comes to our Money in the Bank match on the Raw side at SummerSlam. And speaking of, just teased it, Stone Cold Steve Austin announces that we're going to get Montez Ford versus Dolph Ziggler in a Money in the Bank qualifier as well. We're going to get it tonight on Raw um and good work here from everyone montez ford great to see here 78 like with these three involved i know austin really brings that up but dolph ziggler's we've talked about his overness is not great but man montez ford he is um he's kind of been a spark here and we're gonna get a one-on-one match montez ford dolph ziggler as we remember the street profits got their i'm gonna do like a little history lesson here again for the people who had to wait a month for this (laughs) that is that is my fault so i'm gonna try to recap it the best I can so you all don't have to go back and necessarily watch the previous episodes we had the tag team match between the Usos and the Street Profits on a previous episode of Raw um, and it was for the championships and we had Dolph Ziggler get involved cost the Profits their their shot at the title so that sets up this match here with Montez Ford Dolph Ziggler we've had sort of a running storyline with Montez Ford over the past month now um, just a lot of different things. And you again, you can go back and kind of get a, a better idea of what that's been. But uh, we've really started to sort of push Montez forward um, in, in, sort of, in sort of a different type of character. And uh, again, this will continue to play out as we move along. But we're going to get Montez forward, Dolph Ziggler tonight, Money in the Bank qualifier. And speaking of Money in the Bank qualifiers, 
59 here, not great on this match, but it's probably Ricochet's fault. <laughs> For those who have watched the series, you know everything is Ricochet's fault when we look at our email each week. Uh, it seems like that everyone hates this guy. Uh, but, uh, however, Sheamus did not care too much about him here. Sheamus gets the win and a pinfall here with a bro kick. 9.45 they go. Um, these two, again, have both qualified for the Raw Money in the Bank match. I know what you're thinking. Why do you beat Ricochet here um, heading into that? Well, I think it's different. We're having a ladder match at SummerSlam. This is just sort of a match between two competitors in that one. It's a little bit different scenario, uh, but uh, we'll we'll continue to play this up over the next couple of weeks leading into that match. But it is Sheamus who has come back with a vengeance here recently, and uh, he is now qualified for the Money in the Bank, and he gets a pinfall victory over one of the competitors in that match as well as he gets to win over Ricochet. We know that's going to make everyone backstage happy. Triple H, Steve Austin, everyone, because they all hate Ricochet. So Sheamus becomes the new best friend of everyone backstage. And once again, our queens of Raw, Bailey and Sasha Banks, who just, they're, they're the Kevin Owens too. I think they're, they're also in that range of people who have just continued to deliver great ratings in this series. Uh, is Bailey and Sasha taunting Io Shirai, who made her debut on the last episode of Raw, as she became the person that's going to join that triple threat match with Bailey and Sasha Banks at SummerSlam for the championship. We all know. All of this stems from the initial plan of Rhea Ripley, who's now out for a year. That ain't happening because of her injury and uh, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and so it's going to be Bailey, Sasha Banks, Io Shirai, triple threat match for the Raw Women's title at SummerSlam. And uh, once again, Sasha, Bailey, they just always deliver on the mic. So we keep going back to that here using these uh, these segments to be able to really use their personality and their entertainment um, ratings and such. So another great one here for them as we continue to head towards that triple threat match at SummerSlam. And it is Montez Ford in a 58 match. Not bad. I mean, I don't, we weren't expecting a whole lot more from this, but uh, Montez Ford getting the win over Dolph Ziggler in 1205 using the frog splash. So Montez Ford has joined the Money in the Bank ladder match for Raw at SummerSlam. Um, so that's a that's a pretty significant um, achievement for him here as the you know the tag team wrestler. Now he's in this big singles match at SummerSlam. Um, what does that mean moving forward for him? What does it mean moving forward for the Street Profits? Perhaps we will find out. Uh, but Montez Ford has really been, you know, a little bit more of a serious sort of character over the past month or so. Um, and, you know, we talked about sort of the, the stuff he's talked about with the Bobby Lashley things, everything. He's really been trying to prove himself, and he does that here as he qualifies, and uh, it is Montez Ford joining that match. we got a pretty stacked lineup on the Raw side here in this Money in the Bank ladder match, so uh, Montez Ford joins the mix. And then it's AJ Styles. Uh, once again, superb work from AJ Styles, 85, beautiful stuff. And uh, this is AJ Styles cutting a promo, uh, hyping that match he's going to have with Big E at SummerSlam. As you remember, on the previous episode of Raw, Styles gets himself intentionally counted out during the tag team match with uh, with Big E on the other side. And so Styles, another promo here, which there's going to be another tag team match tonight with Styles and Big E on the opposite sides. Uh, but it's basically AJ Styles saying, hey, he's not scared of Big E. Everyone's making it out like he was scared. He just got counted out because he was trying to save his energy. He's conserving what he needs to conserve for the match at SummerSlam. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. It is what it is. He's not scared of Big E. He's going to show that tonight. So that's the setup. And like I said, I could have wrote all that up, but that probably would have taken a lot longer. And <laughs> I just think, again, uh, I appreciate you guys cutting me some slack on this uh, as I think it will help us push through the series a little bit better. Uh, than me, you know, having to, to to write out the angles because that that was something that I really wanted to do. But once I got into it, I realized I can probably still achieve some of the same type of things if I just do it uh, with the normal angles. So uh, I will still bring those back, like I said, for some of the stuff. But for now, uh, we push through here. AJ Styles, great rating, and uh, continues the feud with Big E. Speaking of which, uh, it is uh, Big E and Angelo Dawkins. So we put Dawkins with Big E here. And they defeat AJ Styles and Robert Roode, uh, who's Ziggler, you know, so we had a little bit of a connection there. 1137, as it comes down to a disqualification 
Um, I know here this is another thing where I, I just, I think I forgot to do it where you do the intentional disqualification or whatever. Basically, how we want to play this is AJ Styles walked out last week of the match, got intentionally counted out. This week, essentially, AJ Styles, we'll add Robert Roode into the mix here, get themselves disqualified um, against Big E. So, another intentional loss for AJ Styles, whereas not, whereas to sort of protect himself against Big E. So that's sort of the story we're running with here. Um, as we can see, the storyline advances but loses heat. Still a 73. It's a pretty good match. I mean, this is actually, to be honest with you, this was probably a better match than I expected. Uh, but uh, I think that's because AJ Styles, Big E, they really elevate it based on what the popularity is of those two right now. But um, we're still playing up the theme. Even though AJ Styles saying all the right things, he gets himself intentionally counted out. Now he gets himself intentionally disqualified or gets his team intentionally disqualified. And so... Is he really not scared of Big E? <laughs> we'll find out moving forward. But uh, I'm excited for that match at SummerSlam. I think we'll get some good stuff out of it. And Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Wait a second. Steve Austin did not do well without a script to follow. I am pretty sure that's the first time we've ever gotten that in this series. Maybe in the history of TW, has uh, anyone ever gotten Stone Cold Steve Austin did not do well without a script? To follow well he didn't do well here apparently 81 we'll still take it i mean him without a script is still better than most people with a script but he announces that we're going to get bobby lashley and sheamus versus edge and daniel bryan for next week um speaking of changes since we did this series last uh bobby lashley of course is uh is our current champion in this series no longer the champion um edge is uh doing stuff on smackdown of course still and daniel bryan not even in wwe anymore uh, so lots happened since we since we did this last episode uh, here on our save. But this is a big tag team match. going to be the main event for next week's edition of Raw um, as we build towards, of course, uh, we've got Lashley versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title at SummerSlam, and we've got Edge and Sheamus both in that Money in the Bank match. So that's our, our main event for next week. And speaking of main events, we head into our main event for this week. And a really good match here, 75 overall. Could have been better, clearly. Uh, Daniel Bryan off his game, but it's Daniel Bryan defeating Chad Gable in 12:30. Uh, so I was—I don't think we haven't actually ran this match before, but I was thinking, boy, Daniel Bryan and Chad Gable. Even though Gable's kind of been someone who's lost a lot of the matches in this series, uh, he's usually had some pretty good ones. So we put them together here. Fun little match here. 12:30. Daniel Bryan gets the win to continue the momentum on his road to SummerSlam. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just—I thought it was kind of fun to see what this rating would be between these two, but. This is where I think the popularity of Brian comes in and just the work rate stuff of Chad Gable. That's certainly helped out here. So good stuff from these two in our main event. But unfortunately for Daniel Bryan, he does have an opponent at SummerSlam and his opponent still not very happy with him after he cut that uh, pretty passionate promo on the previous episode of Raw uh, talking about, you know, Bobby Lashley needed to prove himself and that uh, you know, just the differences between these two uh, as they head into their match and Bobby Lashley wanting respect Daniel Bryan saying he's got to earn it. Well, perhaps that's what Bobby Lashley tries to do here. Gets an 80 overall. Lashley and MVP come in. They attack Daniel Bryan in the ring. They leave him down and out. So they come in. They do their business. Uh, and Daniel Bryan completely laid out in the ring. We advance the storyline for the WWE Championship. Daniel Bryan looks good here in the selling role. Uh, so that's good. I know, once again, commentary dragging us down. We're going to fix that. Uh, we already got plans are in motion. Everything is in motion for this commentary situation. Uh, we'll get there. We just got to wait a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, nice little segment here. An 80, but we're not finished because Lashley and MVP come in. They attack Daniel Bryan. They beat him down. And then they start to let up a little bit, start to make their way out of the ring. And here comes Edge. 87 overall here. Good stuff. Um, Edge runs in after Lashley and MVP beat down Daniel Bryan. So Edge comes in seemingly to uh, make the save here and sort of set up, as we said a minute ago, it is going to be Edge and Bryan versus Lashley and Sheamus next week. Uh, so Edge runs in after Daniel Bryan has been beaten down uh, and comes in to uh, seemingly, you know, run off Lashley and MVP. So Bryan is already down and out. Um, he is left in bad shape here. Uh, Edge runs in, makes uh, the semi-save, I guess you could say, after Lashley and MVP are already starting to make their way out. And uh, good segment. 87 overall. MVP performs poorly here. But uh, we're building. We're building to SummerSlam. This is in another 
important plot point moving towards SummerSlam. And uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, I think our main event actually next week is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, should be a good match between uh, Daniel Bryan and Edge. Nice little team there. And then we've got Lashley and Sheamus. That's another really good team. So uh, it's going to be fun to see how that main event unfolds. It'll be fun to see how things unfold at SummerSlam. But a nice rating to end the show. And I think overall this show probably does pretty well. And an 80. Yeah, so very good. Uh, we increase our popularity here. Good show. I uh, thought it was very, very tight show. Compact. We didn't have a lot of segments, but uh, we hit all the main stuff we wanted to hit. We had the return of Goldberg to set up uh, clearly something moving forward with him and Kevin Owens. Leading into SummerSlam, we've still got the stuff going on with Styles and Big E. The big triple threat women's match we're going to have. The Money in the Bank match. Everything covered here. And, of course, the main event as well. Um, so, I think Raw is in a good spot. Like, I think Raw is going to wind up being... There's a lot going on in SmackDown, but I keep saying it. Like, I'm just... I'm really excited about the direction we're going to have going forward, storyline-wise, for Raw. Both heading into SummerSlam and after SummerSlam. Um, so, a lot of good stuff happening on Raw right now. Let's see what we need to address before we wrap up this episode. And uh, as for Raw, as we see here, really struck gold with this show, no doubt. The only other noteworthy news thing here on the uh, article section looks like QT Marshall staying with AEW. So, we had a chance to go after QT. We decided not to. Didn't really think uh, we needed uh, really him and didn't really have any creative plans for him. So, that's that. Let's see what we got from an email standpoint. Uh, Saray... Let's see, she relocates, so that's good to know. Our drug test feeds, and then we get a 3.81 rating for Raw. So not a whole lot uh, happening. Luckily, no one hates Ricochet more than they did before this episode started. I will consider that a win, and I hope you consider it a win that uh, we are back up and running with this series. But uh, as I said earlier, I appreciate everyone hanging with me on this. Uh, hopefully you've stayed patient. And uh, yes, I'm going to try to get back to what we were doing before, where I was pretty regularly able to, you know, pump out two or three of these a week. And uh, I think just not doing the, the writing of the angles will probably help that a little bit, help me stay a little bit ahead, because uh, I was probably, uh, for my own fault, it's my own fault, it's no one else's fault, it's my own fault, I was probably getting a little too detailed uh, when I could just as easily sort of explain it uh, verbally than have to do it necessarily from a written standpoint. So uh, that will hopefully speed things up a little bit. But uh, again, I appreciate everyone uh, hanging in there. We've got a lot of new subscribers. Even I haven't done anything in a month, but a lot of people seemingly still into the series. And uh, hopefully that gives them a chance to catch up heading into sort of the restart here. Uh, our own little uh, relaunch. Uh, we're not NXT, but uh, perhaps this will be our own little relaunch uh, on this one. So be sure to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. And uh, we will continue the road to SummerSlam here coming up in several episodes. We will have the big pay-per-view this is the one I've been hyping up for a while now, uh, saying that we had some really big things in the works, and uh, hopefully uh, you will think so as well once we get to SummerSlam. So be sure, again, uh, share this, uh, subscribe, all that, and uh, yeah, we'll be back with the next episode, hopefully not a month from now. I'm just kidding. It won't be a month from now. Uh, with the uh, next episode of SmackDown as a Roman Reigns continues to run wild over there. So that will be uh, our next episode of WWE will be uh, a look at SmackDown in August of Week 2.